the Kings of Dragons Dragon King 551. Today we're going to talk about tournament um, March Madness versus college football playoff and how a team gets into this. Now, um, I've been seeing comments on my previous videos when I talked about um, comparing San Diego State getting blown out by UConn to TCU getting blown out by Georgia and everyone was complaining saying that's not the same thing. It's not apples to apples. It's apples to oranges. Well, you're wrong, okay? First off, I have already established it, and I have watched Selection Sundays over and over and over again uh, for the March Madness tournament. The reason Michigan two years ago got in over Texas A&M is because their strength of schedule was um, better, and therefore they didn't have to play in the four-team elimination game with those other eight teams to get into it and play an extra bid game to get in. They didn't have to play that, and they didn't go to the NIT because their schedule was better. And it was the same thing where Texas A&M had a record of 20, let's say 22, and I think like five or something, or something really low. And ultimately, they went packing, and they went to go on to win the NIT tournament. But the point is, is that the same logic applies with Florida State for the college football playoff uh, committee the same way that it applied with Texas A&M getting shut out, and that is strength of schedule, um, strength of record, and everything else in between. So it is apples to apples. You can compare both tournaments. Yes, there are 68 teams, which is completely different, but next year there will be a 12-team expansion. The other thing that I find about it is Injuries should not be a factor. So if injuries are a factor, why did it, if a team didn't make it, take Isaiah Livers. Isaiah Livers was on the Michigan Wolverines. He was out. He was our starting small forward. And we still made the March Madness tournament. And we did really well. And then we made it to the Elite Eight and got, um, well, we got knocked out by UCLA. I was going to say killed, but we just, our shot couldn't fall. And uh, we lost in a close one. But the point is, is that, if an injury is something catastrophic, why not crucify a team f for that factor? No, you don't do that in college in college basketball. You do that in college football, which sucks, and I think find that to be a factor that you should never put in. Um, then you know the strength of schedule and uh, strength of record is another thing where it's just like, well, the record should hold more weight, and it should. It should hold more weight. I don't care who you beat. You should hold more weight for the record if you are close to undefeated or above 500 and you are close in that range of um where it says 0.900 or 1.00 which is a thousand then you should be you should be guaranteed to go into the college football playoff or into the March Madness tournament but then there's this other logic that ticks me off where Stephen A Smith I'm sorry that a lot of people like him, but he sometimes is a bonehead to me and stuff, and he's an idiot, just like Max Kellerman is and Paul Feinbaum or whatever his name is. Um, they're all idiots at times and when I listen to them. The thing here is he first he blames Michigan because they're like, oh, you should Florida State fans, you should blame Michigan. Why are you blaming us, okay? You're saying cheating scandals. If anyone cheats, it's Alabama with Nick Saban winning seven national championships and stuff. There's no there's no way you can win that many without some cheating going on. How about that? The other thing, I'm sorry to get off topic like that, but then he says something along the lines of this. The reason they didn't want Florida State in is because of the mistakes of having Cincinnati and TCU in. Okay, if that's a factor, then let's not let another San Diego State team in and let's not let these weak ass bum teams come into the game expecting to win or going into that game with a high probability chance of winning against you know in the national championship game in basketball and stuff if that's the case then don't invite teams that are likely going to get blown out in the national championship game when they do well the rest of the games and play them close because you're going to go Eventually, you get into the national championship game, and UConn, yeah, they were the four seed, I think, but ultimately, they were the Goliath. They were the powerhouse. They blew the team out and won by 28-plus points. That That's a blowout, and Baylor did it the year prior, or two years prior, pardon me, two years prior, in 2021, 
when Gonzaga got blown out because of the three-point barrage and stuff, and they were not that great of a team, and Baylor beat them by 16-plus points. So if that is the case, and you're saying you're always freaking out about blowouts, why not talk about March Madness blowouts in games like that, where you're constantly blowing out teams left and right, and they should not be invited to the tournament? That logic is bad, too. I I'm telling you right now, March Madness versus the college football playoff logic, they both have the same requisites of how to get into the playoff, the strength of schedule, the strength of record, and then obviously some other key factors that I don't even know what March Madness does with those, but the ones in college football are bizarre in my book. Roll, like, okay, one of our offensive linemen from Michigan broke his leg. You gonna keep you gonna keep Michigan out for that? How about TCU, Michigan, when Blake Corden went down? You gonna keep us out for that? No. Then you shouldn't keep a team out for their quarterback. And if that's the case and you want to use that logic, then let's say a starting point guard, let's say Stephen Curry of Davidson College, when he played there, went down with an ankle injury. You gonna keep them out of the March Madness tournament because their starting point guard went down? Sure, let's keep them out because of that. That's your bad logic there. And that's why both of them need to change the way that they think. I think the college football playoff needs to change more. But as I've said before, the March Madness and college football playoff have the same requisites and same rules and guidelines of each other. That's just how it is. Anyone that says that they don't is wrong. They have the same guidelines. There's, there's no difference here. I, I've watched both selection shows. I've watched ESPN do those, and I watched the selection show after the conference championship games are played for basketball it's the same concept okay it doesn't matter what sport it is you want to switch it you want to take these two sports and then do it with baseball for college um baseball sure you want to do it with hockey we can do it with hockey we got the frozen four and all of that we can do it with hockey okay i mean those top four sports you can do it with any one of them and determining how a team gets in or not based off the two requisites of strength of record, strength of schedule, and then other stupid things with injuries, which is dumb, and personally, I don't think it should be a factor. But anyway, yes, March Madness versus the college football playoff, they have the same requisites. That's all I got for you. Until next time, guys, don't forget to stay radical. I'll see you in the next one. Um, but yeah, I, I think that if you want to use some of the logic from college football playoff, then don't invite another team that is likely go going to get blown out in the national championship game in the March Madness tournament. And... If that's the case, or an injury plagues them, then don't invite the team in because of an injury and stuff. And that's just the way I see it. So, I don't know. Until next time, guys, don't forget to stay radical. I'll see you in the next one. And I find it ridiculous.